Hello, everybody. Welcome to the um, tonight's Tuesday Night Live portrait painting demo. I am just going to um, start jumping right in here. Oh, got to turn my sound off because then you're jumping right yep. in here. There we go. Okay, now on your mark, get set, go. So um, for those who haven't watched my demos before, usually I just start um, measuring my land, my landmarks in the painting and that will allow me to um, to get right into the drawing knowing where some of these points are when I say drawing I'll be drawing with paint and just um, I've just started off painting with pink tonight just because I know that eventually I'm going to get to the to the side of her face which is lit with that hot pink light and I really want to keep those colors really pure. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a stretch to try to get um, those colors working. And so, um, and so the less um, other colors that I have in there to contaminate that pink, the, the better off I'm going to be. Let me remeasure that. Okay, that eye is a bit off. I may have to come in with some other colors. If I make too many mistakes with that pink color, then I need some other color to, to see where I am. Okay. So um, if anyone there out there can tell me whether the sound's okay, that would be really helpful. I've had some problems in the past with the audio being loud enough. Um, plus, if I start to talk really quietly, just... Um, Give me a text saying um, talk a little bit louder because as the painting progresses and I start to get like really comfortable and maybe a little bit fatigued, then my my voice really starts to drop off. I am going to put a little bit of purple in here to to let me know where I am on that. Okay, my colleague from the office, Angela, is here and she says that my that my audio is good. Okay, fantastic. Um, someday I'm gonna figure out how to, and now I'm, I'm already blowing it because I, I need to charge uh, the phone. Ah, I'm all tangled up in cords. I need to charge my phone as this video is going. Otherwise I'll run out of um, power right in the middle and that would not, um, that, would, ah, that would not be good at all. Pardon my, um, my technical difficulties. Okay, so in a second, um, back to back to the painting. Okay, great. So um, back to finding my landmarks. So I'm I'm gonna a real nice point I can find here is the the side of the nose where it dips down into the eye socket. I if I can get find exactly where that is that'll be real helpful and that's going to be one of the darker darks in her face I mean obviously this is a very unusual lighting um, when people ask me about how to paint flesh tones um, I usually tell them that there's no such thing <laughs> you just have to look at if you're painting live or or from a photo you just have to look to see what colors are there and the better you are at matching those colors, um, the more realistic it will look. Um, I try to dissuade people from pre-mixing batches of pre-mixed um, uh, colors for flesh tones because then usually you don't end up with the variety of colors that are actually there and, and people will end up looking a little bit too orange or flat and not um, you're not going to get all the greens and violets and those kind of colors that someone would have in their face. Okay, I covering over my. Okay, both audio and video are okay. Good, thank you. Um, so we have right now we have um, six people joining us. That's that's good. Um, I know that. Um, it's going to take a while of me doing these before um, we get a little more people joining. It's 
I have a, um, a little over 500 um, subscribers. So, sorry, a little over 600 subscribers. And um, so my channel really isn't that um, big for this kind of thing to, to get a, a big um, response. I just actually put a, um, did a live announcement on Instagram to let people know. If some of you are here and saw that announcement, let me know so I know that that's um, something I'll do in the future to let people know just before I start. So the um, foreshortening on her face is um, pretty drastic. So um, that's where I'm really going to have to be careful about where some of these landmarks are. The tip of her nose is fairly close to the top of the, of the panel. I can see I've already started um, painting where the tip of the nose would be. And it's not, um, if you look, the, the nose, the base of the nose is not that much um, lower than where the eyes are. And so um, I'm just going to put the nostrils in to give myself an idea. <clears throat> so, and I can see I'm not really cutting in far enough in that... Um, in that dark area of her eye socket on that side. This side may be enough. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start laying in some of that really intense pink just to see if that is um, something that I can achieve easily enough. Oh, that's the wrong place. So that, my quinacridone red is too warm and uh, this is a point where I wish I had quinacridone violet, um, which is a is a cooler color. I um, may have to add a touch of purple, which is going to kill my intensity, but it's going to shift the color a little bit. Um, purple is just one of um, dox um, dioxazine purple is one of the strongest colors, but Unfortunately, the warm of the quinacridone red and the little bit of um, cool, the, the bluish color that the purple has will knock the intensity down a little bit. But um, if I add a touch of white and, and paint transparently, then I can still hold on to some of that intensity. Um, and the reason why I'm interested in the transparency is because Colors work differently when you um, treat them as a glaze than they do if, um, if you paint them um, thick or opaquely. Um, that's because the light actually is bouncing through the color and bouncing back out again. So it's uh, reflecting off the color of the white of your panel and then coming through the color and that gives it um, a much higher intensity than you would be able to get normally. I'm, I, I just put down a little bit of safflower oil, not the type that you'd use for cooking, but um, but the uh, refined safflower oil that's um, sold by Gamblin, um, and that will help me thin the color and help uh, retain a, a sense of film that will um, keep the keep the paint from. Um, from breaking up a little bit. Okay, and then I have some of the color in her cheek. I kind of feel like I didn't do, I kind of rushed the measurements a little bit, so I'm gonna need to go back and um, measure a little better. I can see the eye, corner of the eye should be starting over there. And I don't think I had it quite in the right place. <clears throat> So let me go back and measure again now that I'm really um, committing to where that eye is. That looks about right. Um, and then I'm gonna carve into those, um, those paint lines a little bit so I can see exactly where I'm putting down those marks. And then she has that blue in the white of her eye. And then her actual eye is, um, even though it looks black, I'm going to paint it primarily purple. 
um, that'll just give it a little bit of hint of color. Um, that'll be so dark that um, you won't really see it so much as purple as, as much as you're just seeing it as dark. But it will give a, um, an all over purple sense to some of those shadows. Um, I find that when I'm painting with purple as like my darkest dark, I don't really see it, see the color in it when I'm painting it. But then when I um, look at the painting as a whole at the very end, it does, um, you kind of feel that purple cast uh, to the color. That's just, um, I've done a few paintings that way and that's just um, how they've come out. Just uh, an overall purpleness to the shadows. Just, it ends up being very subtle, but it does read. That's if you paint with this uh, doxazine purple without putting any white or any yellow or any other color that would lighten it. It just, and for the most part, it just looks like black. Okay, if any of you have any questions for me, I'd be happy uh, to answer them. I know that there's a few people that said they wanted to paint along with me. So if you're out there painting also, um, please let me know. And uh, I hope that um, you, if that's the case, that you've got the resource image. If not, I can quickly find the link um, to it and uh, send it to whoever. Um, but um, also a pretty good version of it is on my Instagram um, post. So on the on the post where um, people were choosing which image to use tonight. Okay, so here I'm getting into the the side of the contour of her face and I do wanna make sure that, that I'm getting that fairly accurate because that is gonna really, in a way, really affect the look of her face a lot. So I wanna look for some of the corners. There's a corner of her cheek here that's a, um, a little bit higher than the base of her nose. So that's about here. And then there's another corner down below her mouth and I can and uh, I can find the measurement of that. And then there's the point where her neck meets her jawline. So uh, got a measure from the top, I think here. Unfortunately, my monitor is just smaller than the um, then the this image size that I have here. Okay, well first I'm gonna find the that corner where the where the jaw bends a little bit. Okay, so that's kinda up here. And I need to find the measurement this way too from that. It's almost like a round. It's a little hard to find exactly where it is, but this other point will help me where the where the neck intersects. I think I need a longer brush for this measurement. <laughs> I'm really struggling. I'm holding on to the to the uh, the hairs of the brush to to reach completely. Okay, looks like um, I'm pretty close to where that is. And this uh, measurement part, this is pr probably the most uh, boring part of doing the painting. Um, in my case, I've said in the previous video that I have a little touch of ADHD. And so um, most traditionally, um, you would do a fairly um, solid, exact painting uh, drawing before you start painting. And um, I cannot do that. That's that's where I draw the line with my ADHD. So I tend to just want to get just the enough information that I need and then just go right into painting. Okay, the jaw just keeps on coming down. There's a tilt to the head. Gotta, um, so a real common mistake is to straighten things out as, you, as you're working on a painting. And with something slightly tilted then the tendency is to make it straight. Um, in this case, the head's tilted one way, the neck's tilted the other direction. And so it would be a little bit helpful to just exaggerate those things a little bit. 
so that as you're working on them and they start to straighten out that you've compensated a bit for that um, that tendency okay I am going to find a little bit better the shape of those nostrils um, and this is a uh, it's going to be helpful with the, the extreme color and value changes in her face to get um, enough color down that I'm blocking out a lot of that white that's in there. And so I'm going to mix um, some fairly large batches of color that I know that I can cover some of the some of these areas pretty quickly. And I am going to go pretty dark here. It looks pretty dark compared to the white, but I assure you when I surround it with the right color on all sides that um, it will start to look lighter. And that's just sort of how um, perception works is that you, everything is relative. If you, uh, if you surround a light color with lighter colors, then it's going to look darker. If you surround a dark color with even darker colors, it's going to look lighter. And so you just learn to adjust and compensate for that effect. I know a lot of people like to tone their canvases. I, um, I tone my palette so that I can more easily judge the colors and I get pretty good at judging the um, values, how they're gonna end up looking on, on the painting. And, um, and so I, and I like having the, a lot of times the white of the panel coming through. So, um, I don't tone my panel as often. I did give a thought before I started this to, um, to start with a panel that was completely toned in pink. And that way I didn't have to work so hard to get that, um, pink color, but hey, what's the fun in that? Um. Plus, you guys get to see me struggle a little bit. So I think I'm going to just work on this eye a little bit so that I'm getting a sense of realism that's going to help me. I'm going to then maybe circle out from there and try to adjust some of the values so that it just gives me a sense of uh, some, some sort of anchor that I know I'm close to what I, I want to get. I have to, I put too much purple in the white of her eye there, so I have to come back and um, hit it with a pretty strong uh, phthalo blue and white. And when, when I'm painting, I find that um, I'm very rarely graying down colors. I'm usually, um, painting them as intensely as I can in the area area I can. And that's because um, usually I'm tinting a lot of color, which is adding white, and the white will take out a lot of the intensity. Or I'm shading a color, which is adding black, and that will also have a similar effect. It's only in a certain range where you're close to the value of the color straight out of the tube, and then you have to do quite a bit of um, mixing if you don't want that that pure pure color um so for example this this light that's alongside of her eye is kind of this yellowish green it's a little bit um it's a little bit um like a puke green i guess um baby baby puke um and it's not a very intense color but you can see the color in it and and that's, um, I'm just mixing a few colors together to kind of knock down the intensity rather than picking a color straight from the tube. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to just look uh, uh, for questions um, on my feed here. Uh, do you use water to make the paint more fluid? No, I'm using um, Gamsol, which is... Uh, it's both a, a paint thinner and a paint and a cleaner. Um, it's, a, it's an odor, odorless turpentine, and it is suitable for thinning out your paint to use in the actual painting. There are some paint thinners that you should never 
use uh, except to maybe clean but it shouldn't become part of your painting because it will um, degrade over time um, but this has an archival value and then I'm also using tonight I have a little bit of um, this pretty old bottle of Gamblin safflower oil and um, this you can also just pour right into your um, into your thinner mixture if you want the painting to stay wet, stay um, wet longer, <clears throat> and that'll give you if you're if you have an, uh, an alla prima technique painting wet into wet, <clears throat> then excuse me, <coughs> then adding um, adding oils um, to to your thinner will um, can keep the paints actually wet on your on your panel or on your canvas for several days. And uh, if you go pure oils for thinning, then you can really um, stretch out the drying time. <clears throat> There's also uh, mediums that you can use to both extend and to shorten the drying time. There's dryers like, um, actually I don't know the names of them off the top of my head because I don't I don't use them that often. I'm usually looking more to extend drying time rather than um, rather than shorten it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Let me see if I can find a little bit of water here. I'm just <clears throat> grabbing what's available, which is water that's been sitting on my desk for four days, and <clears throat> I'm probably going to die of some sort of. Um, of uh, microbial poisoning but <clears throat> that's okay you guys saw it here first just makes it a little more exciting that I'm risking my life um, to do this painting for you guys <clears throat> okay so um, so I thought it was acrylics uh, no it is oils um, and AJ do you use turpentine now and no I, I answered that already that's the um, that's the Gamblin um, Gamsol, <clears throat> and um, some people. Someone said I use turpentine. That's Ellen in uh, in Sweden. I thought it was. I use turpentine to speed up um, the drying. Um, maybe it's turpentine and not water. Um, okay, great. So, um, if anyone out there wants to guess the color of her teeth, um, what colors I should mix. You're welcome to do so. I'm mixing it right now, and uh, I don't know how well you can see the photo there in, that's on the screen, but um, I am mixing some colors there, and I'm probably going to go a little bit too dark. Yep, that's too dark. need a little more white in there, but I am um, mixing a little bit of purple and blue for her teeth. And um, the magic of painting wet into wet or all prima is that you can put down a color and if it's wrong, you just keep on painting into it in the direction that you want to go until you get to where you, where you want it to be. And um, it's a little bit easier than trying to get that exact color on the palette before you put it down. I can see um, now that I have start to have some of the things in here I can see where my drawing is just off a little bit um, so I just can squint look back and forth between the photo and the painting and then start to adjust things and um, can narrow the eye a little bit there and um, one thing I like to do thing because um, it's the thing that you see but it's um, you know that the eye is attracted to but it um, it also is the um, it's it's the thing that's sort of the one of the finer details that should be left towards the very end but I like to put it in early because I like to feel the the surface quality of something so, and I don't, I don't mind moving it if it ends up being in the wrong place. <clears throat> so.
so I will just keep on, um, can, okay, so now I start to feel the, the quality of the, the eye feeling a little bit wet and reflective, and that's also going to help me, f um, identify where that actually is in space in relationship to the things around it. Getting it a little bit into her eyelash. There's a little bit of reflected of that baby puke green right at the, on her lower lid. And then she has a, a swoop, this kind of dark shape that swoops around that kind of defines the, the shape of that lid. And then I can come in with just, um, a lighter light just on the extremity of that eyelid and that's that's not perfect but I can come back and adjust it later if I need to also there's no one who says that it has to match the photograph exactly as long as it it feels right and is doing is supporting the rest of the painting sometimes a good painting is when you don't paint something that's that's there that you can see sometimes it will be a stronger painting with things left out and that editing process is um, is part of uh, part of the design of the painting. If you don't edit, then um, you just aren't telling the viewer what you want them to see. And so, when when you're doing the painting, think about what you want the focal point to be, and uh, put the most contrast and the most color the most uh, edge sharpness in those areas. And then, um, and then you can work to make um, everything else less dominant from there. And then you can really get um, someone to look exactly where you want them to, to look. Okay, I've got this beautiful um, blue gray colors coming up into the forehead. And I really have to um, do a, quite a bit of redrawing here. My some of the placement of those initial forms um, were not measured very carefully, so I'm just going back and um, fix, starting to fix that a little bit. Okay. Um, Again, uh, feel free to ask any questions if you have any, or I will just um, keep on blathering away while I'm painting. So one thing I see right now is even though I got the intensity of the pinks in her cheeks and I, um, I'm going dark enough on the shadow side, probably dark enough, there's some areas that are still too light, which I'll knock them down even if I'm not getting quite the right color and value yet but but it's more important to knock them down at this point um, I can see that this um, area I'm not getting it light enough I'm not getting the value light enough and I don't think I'm gonna get it quite um, by painting it tr just transparently I'm not getting the right um, the right quality of color so I think I'm gonna have to mix some of that um, quinacridone red with white and one benefit of that is it's actually cooling off the color oh boy it's really dulling it too um, so I I am kind of in a pickle here to get that kind of color intensity but you know it's not the end of the world if I don't get it I'm just um, can wipe some of that away and then come back in with some more transparent color. So that's closer to the value, but I'm losing a lot of color there. Get my, some, some more of that uh, safflower oil. Okay, you can see I'm in trouble here. I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm not, I'm not gonna get it. Um, that's fine. Uh, I, I can make this work, I think, somehow. And um, before I panic, I'm going to put in some of the 
the dark of the hair that surrounds this, and this is going to help me a little bit. So um, I am going to take a vocal break here for a second. Um, hi, honey. Hi. hi. There's some uh, sausage and there's quinoa in the uh, fridge. You're welcome. Okay, back to work. So... Yeah, so this is, um, I'm glad everyone picked this for me because it, um, it is a really a tough one um, to do. Um, I wonder if you knew that when you picked it or people disliked the color in it and just wanted to see it painted. But um, something tells me that there's a few sadists out there that said, huh, he's going to really, he's going to really eat it on this one. Let's, let's pick that one. Yeah, I know, I know who you are. I know, I know you say this out there. I know that um, some of my friends out there who've come from Sketchy, um, this was one of the um, Friday faces or whatever it was, the 30 faces maybe it was. And so there's a lot of people who'd, uh, who had painted Lisa's um, uh, face before. And so they may already realize that how um, tough this painting is to paint. And so, um, so that's just motivating me, man, because that's just making me mad. And I'm just going to show you that I can do it. You know, there's nothing like just, you know, throwing down a challenge like that, because I am just going to muscle through and show you, prove to you guys that I can do it. Okay, so keep on going. Uh, I've cut a little bit too sharply her jaw, but that's okay. Um, as I get um, fill in the rest of the face, then I'm going to really start to see um, where my forms are off in that foreshortening. That is, um, so those of you who aren't familiar with foreshortening, this is uh, essentially the idea of something that's coming towards you in space. Um, when it's a foreshortened face, it just means that the the face is, um, part of the face is tilted away from you or the face is tilted towards or away from you. And so a lot of the forms that are in the face, the critical details that give the likeness, um, end up moving much closer together and getting them positioned correctly um, in relationship to each other becomes um, so much more critical than if it wasn't foreshortened because any slight, um, any slight discrepancy from where it needs to be then becomes multiplied. Um, if any, if, if there's any cat lovers out there, that's Pasha saying hello to you guys. Um, he's saying hello to all um, of your pets around the world. And um, he's probably not going to get um, here a reply back, unfortunately, but oh well. He just is meowing just because he loves to. And, okay, so now I've already screwed up the side of his nose because it has to be as intense as um, the cheek, and I didn't, um, I didn't keep it real clean. So, hopefully, maybe I can throw in some naphtha red in here and that will help. It's a little bit, uh, that's more opaque than the, um, than the crinacridone red. And so there's a possibility that that will help me boost the intensity. I also see that um, there's a highlight that is on the tip of the nose, and then there's some that's running down the edge of the f uh, flare of her nostril. So, okay. Hello. Uh, sorry about that. I uh, dropped... I dropped out for a minute. Um, and maybe it's still connecting. Darn it. Hold on.
Hello. I think our router dropped out. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I don't know how long I was out for. Um, I, uh, I have a, a crappy old router, so it does this occasionally, especially when during these live uh, videos. Um, it tends to drop out like once every couple hours, so it's bound to drop out if I'm doing uh, these live feeds. If anyone's there, you can give me a text to let me know how long I was. I fell out for. Hopefully it wasn't too long. Um, I just kept on painting and talking, so I told some really great jokes while you guys were gone. Too bad. Um, I don't think I can retell them. Um, okay, so not too long. A couple of minutes. Great. Okay. Um, so here... Um, this is I'm just moving paint around a little bit. Um, I always say you got to be careful not to over blend, but um, you also want to enjoy some of what oils are really good at, which is just smearing around. It's sort of like that finger tool in Photoshop. Um, that's that's like the best stuff. And so if all you're doing is trying to um, smooth everything out, then that's then you're not doing it right. But if you're just trying to get these kind of nice, soft edges and effects that oils give you, um, then just um, play, you know? Just play, play with the paint and see what you can get. Um, because otherwise you just might as well be painting with acrylics or, or watercolors because um, this, is, this is what oils are meant for. That's, that's what I love about oils. It's so it's so forgiving and allows you to play a lot and and so um, but I just I oh I think I just went a little bit too far now that I've been telling you how fun it is I just messed everything up okay so um, so but I really do want to push things around so I can start to feel the movement of these forms in space like this edge that's along the side of her face has to look like it's further back than then what's going on in the eye? The eye has to be coming forward. And there's all these little forms in there that are telling me um, that that eye is in front. And so it's both the overlapping of information, it's the sharpness and softness of edges. It's also those little forms around the eyes and the cheek that, um, that tell you how to understand these blotches of color is actually forms um, the anatomy of her face and just um, playing with those until it starts to feel like the way you want. Um, really look hard at the photo, not just to see the colors and the shapes, but also um, feeling the feeling the anatomy of it. And just and working back and forth until you start to feel it. And then there are some of these forms, they're very tight. They have to be in the right place for them to read properly. Um, I may not get it right the first time. But, um, and I'm going to knock down some of the, the light there. And darn it, if I can just get some of those brighter colors in here, I'll be golden. Um, but it's going to take some work just to... Get it right. So I'm going with some pure color right here on the base of her nose, on the, on the, um, her the the bottom of her septum, and coming around it with some darks so that it does pop in the same way that it does in the photo. Okay. Uh, it's not it's not looking too bad it's a it looks a little messy right now so um, I'm sure part of my job towards uh, getting this towards the finish is maybe cleaning up some of the areas that are just a little bit too textural and knocking back some of the busyness of it and this and then working to get some of the, the values to read correctly so 
So I know just from experience the outer, um, the shadow side of her nose along her nostril is going to be darker than I, what I've painted it. Because I, um, because there's going to be a little bit of reflective light along that outer edge. And then there's going to be a dark, it's almost, uh, if I can do a pure purple or almost black there to get that to um, pop. Okay, so just starting to feel some of the, the forms um, in her nose. And I can see some of them aren't drawn uh, correctly yet. But uh, when they are, then it will just feel right. Um, there's nothing worse than seeing a beautiful painting except for um, there's lots of problems in the anatomy and the drawing and um, you just feel it in a second it just doesn't nothing feels quite right and and so the key to that is just looking at the photo measuring and adjusting until it starts to feel right <clears throat> Okay, I want to get that. There's a little bit of brighter yellow right in here that's that's popping a little bit. Almost have to put in a pure yellow to get that to read. Oh yeah, isn't that lovely? Starts to really feel like the side of um, the side of her eye, her, her upper cheek right there. And then she has a little bit of that kind of a mauvey color beyond beyond that. And then there's the hair. And that's, as this drops down, this is going to help describe the, the top of her cheek there, where it is in space. And I have to get it right in relationship to her other eye, which is off right now. So I, well, I want to measure the distance in between the eyes. And they will be one eye distance apart, generally, in most people. Um, if... if it's not that, then it does really start to look wrong. There's, um, I wish I can find the painting on the internet, but I went to uh, a, a Goya show that was at the um, Metropolitan Museum many years ago. And uh, it was actually an interesting show because the, the Havelmeyers who built the collection at the Metropolitan Museum, um, but they were very interested in Goya's. And the more interest they had in Goya's, the more people were popping up out of the out of the woodwork to sell them Goya's. And amazing how many Goya's appear when there's money involved. And so they ended up buying tons of um, um, paintings that were attributed to Goya, but were maybe painted in the same time period or maybe by some of his students. And then things that were clearly... Um, fakes that um, were trying to be passed off as um, painted in that period by Goya. Some were just copies of Goya's. Anyway, um, so there was a one painting in there that was by Goya. I mean, there were many paintings by Goya, but one of them was this painting that um, it was of a woman's face. And Goya had um, this, you know, reputation now of, I mean, he was an extraordinary portrait painter. He was the, the court painter for uh, King Charles IV and his family. And he had quite a reputation of because he would paint um, these sumptuous fabrics and jewels and uh, the, whole, the whole environment in the painting was, you know, of, of a royal, uh, royal environment. And everyone seeing this, these paintings felt so flattered. Um, you know, the people in the paintings. But he also would play around with their anatomy, especially in their faces, um, to make them look, usually make them look a little bit stupid, you know, like imbeciles. Um, and he would do it so subtly that people, the people he was painting wouldn't pick up on it. And I looked at one of the paintings that he had did of this woman, and I something was so wrong about her face. I mean, it looked right, but it was wrong. And then she just looked ghastly and 
probably, you know, was flattered by the painting, but I just looked at it a lot until I realized that the eyes were painted so closely together without looking cross-sided. They were just maybe a, almost a half eye distance apart. Um, but he still managed to, which it seems, uh, to keep the likeness and still have the sitter be flattered by, by the work. But at the same time, um, I think he knew what he was doing. He really, I think he had a bit of disdain actually for the court. And while he was making these beautiful paintings of them also at the same time was um, in, in kind of a very subtle betrayal, was trying to make them look bad um, in, um, look bad in sort of the, for um, held in history, as, as you would say. Um, that that history would not look on them as favorably as they thought thought that they would. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, that was just a, a long story about um, getting the eyes the right distance apart. Uh, there's also I am um, which is going to help me a little bit with this color on the cheek is there is a lighter value that follows the edge of the cheek here, I, know, I mean, not the edge, but sort of the separation between the, the light and the shadow. Um, and if I can go a little bit lighter, then maybe these uh, values won't um, look so off. And then I can go a little bit darker on the outer edge too. And so, but what I'm seeing here, if I look back and forth between the two, I don't have I, there's a lot of contrast between this side of the face, uh, the light side of the face, and the dark side of the face. And what I have here, there's almost no contrast in value. And I really need that. And so I'm just really tempted to, you know, just keep it very light, even if I'm not going to get the color. And just keep on coming back into pink and into the... Um, in, into the, that red, the Nacredone red, until I do get a sense of that pink, but I can't go, I can't keep it as dark as, as I need to to get that um, vividness of color. That, is, that doesn't actually look too bad, but um, it just means that I have to go darker in the shadow side to get this to read properly. Um, I had also had thoughts of mixing big pools of color before I started to and just put them out of my palette, but I'm um, thinking about wanting to do more transparency that um, that idea really was gonna wasn't gonna work too well. Okay, so I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna push um, some of the darks in my shadow side even darker. I'm gonna, I got too much purple going and I'm gonna have to come in with some black too, just to um, really knock this, um, the shadows back quite a bit. Also, um, I made, I made her face a little bit too broad and I'm gonna have to cut in a little bit. I know I measured, but just, um, again, with the foreshortening, just a little bit off is going to really be, um, really have a huge effect on the, on the look of it. And one of the reasons why I picked the um, square format for this is because I really wanted to get that overall shape of her hair. I thought it was very interesting. I did do a couple um, Photoshop croppings where I was using more of a rectangular um, panel for setting up for a rectangular panel. And I, I really did focus in on her face, which I think is, an, is a point, the point of interest. And the closer I can sort of get in on that for the painting, the, the better the outcome. But I really did want to get that whole circular feeling of her hair. That's uh, um, maybe a, give it a sense of something like a Klimt painting or uh, Alphonse Mucha um, poster design, 
which would, you know, play with those more kind of geometrical el elements and shapes. And so that's the, that's why in the end I did decide to do go very um, to go square on the on the format. Okay, I need a big brush. Um, okay, there's one around here somewhere. So this one might do. Let's see. And so the background is sort of this mauvey purple. Um, if I put in as much enough white into it, then it's going to um, dull the the dioxazine uh, purple quite a bit. So I can. And I can see actually that's just even a little bit too dark still, but it has the right amount of uh, color in it and the right hue. And I'm I'm a little bit off here because I'm not looking at the whole photo. Um, the shoulder comes up a little bit higher here. Yeah, somewhere around there. And then she has her shirt cutting in up here and then this drops down and this line it's like right off um, about the edge of her nostril where that point is and then comes down at an angle and then she has this bare shoulder that I um, can use to, to figure out where that's drawn. Okay, so I want to get in some of these larger areas of color rather quickly, um, partially because I'm already an hour in and have to be mindful of the time and getting some of those in quickly will help and don't mind a little bit of the smudginess because in the end that'll add interest and I can always clean them up later. And, um, um, but help, um, support the overall painting. If I get these colors in, then I can much more quickly see um, where I need to go to finish the painting. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on these areas. They're not as important as the, the detail of the face. Sorry about all the rattling of my, my setup here. Someday I'll, I'll have a real professional um, video shooting studio here for my live feeds with the multiple cameras, I can point at my easel and point at my palette at the same time so you guys can see everything. Um, but that's somewhere in the future. Right now I just have an iPhone and a tripod, sort of a tripody thing. And, um, and YouTube makes it real easy just to push the button and you're live. So, um, and you're videoing. Uh, this has been very helpful for me, partially for my channel i was spending a lot of time um, producing videos and i still do but these live um, demos uh, make life a lot easy be a lot easier because um, no one expects them to be perfect they um, they get posted right after um, i'm done painting right after i um, end the video and and then i've i've produced a whole Two hour video in in two hours, it's a good um, good bang for the buck kind of thing. Okay, so I will have a lot of adjusting to do in the face, and again, that's my that's going to be the hero of my painting, her face right here, and um, not necessarily the pink part of it, but just the getting that anatomy right um, and getting getting it so you actually feel the, the forms and that they feel anatomically correct. And okay, so um, okay, yeah. So yeah, so the, the, the face you're seeing, the photo, it's, it's very distorted and uh, so Kind of looks interesting when I see it in the camera. It almost looks like a negative because the the hair, which should be black, is all white, like a like a man a like a um, man ray photo or something. So um, 
but there's going to be lots of my drawing that's off until I really go in there and do some finer adjustment um, because I have not been careful about the drawing. And, um, you know, that's the, that's the challenge of going in here and painting a la prima. It's not a, you know, a light pencil sketch first to make sure everything's perfect and then going in and filling it in. It's just really um, going for it. And, okay, Let's see if I can figure out what's rattling so much so you're not driving you guys crazy. Um, I've gone into the hair with mostly black, but I can see I need to get a lot more blue and purple in there. Oh, I see what's happening. It's actually the my easel is hitting the monitor, which I have very close to the painting. If I just separate them a little bit, um, that will keep you guys from finding me and murdering me in my sleep. So um, that's much better. Okay, so she really has a nice, soft, lovely edge to her hair here. It It's very dark along her face and then sort of uh, fades um, it's still pretty dark in relationship to the background, but you can see then the, her curls get kind of soft. And so that's going to give me, um, an area to play around in to make this more of a painting than a photo. Um, things you can do with oils kind of thing that, um, that probably drives photographers crazy because it's a lot, it's much harder to get those kind of effects with the camera. And I have given her way too much hair. She may not mind. It's a cheap way to get hair extensions, but um, really um, can crop in quite a bit there. Okay, I'm just going to just soften this up all the way around. And I really want to get the rest of her hair in quickly because, like I said, don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, really want to get sort of a brushy stroke, um, brush stroke look to it, and it doesn't need to be exact or perfect by any means. Um, I can put in some details at the end that will um, help it um, so that you can actually actually um, see more of the volume in the hair, um, but that that's pretty easy to do. That's um, It looks hard, but um, but it's pretty easy. And so I think that's, some people get intimidated by, by the hair and the texture and all that stuff that's going on when what they really need to do is just simplify um, those ideas quite a bit, get them more towards sort of their bare essence. And, um, and that will make for a stronger painting and uh, also means that you don't have to um, Fret it out and spend hours getting every lock of hair, and um, it's in the end, it's not really what's going to make the painting work. It is impressive if you do, if you're really into kind of a hyper realism, to to um, go after that. But that's a different, that's a whole different kind of painting than than we're talking about here. So right now I'm just going after sort of general, the larger general shapes um, and really trying to get some of those uh, to work. Okay, so yeah. she has again, very bright pink coming in underneath. And this is where I can go darker so I can really um, much easier to get that color um, intensity. This is just about the pure, um, that pure red out of the tube. So um, at least um, one part of the painting is easy. And, um, then that area of her neck has to go darker. It's really a new kind of a neutral color in here. There's some blues and some pinks, but it's overall it's fairly, fairly neutral compared to the brightness of that pink, which again, I don't have, I don't have quite uh, light enough. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. And 
Right now I am using a fairly big brush, which is good. I was working with too small of a brush before. And I can see, um, I have to chant to myself, darker, 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 darker. Otherwise I will keep on adding white to the paint, thinking that it's too light. Um, I mean that it's too dark until um, that shadow side is um, ends up being way too light. So I have to go darker than the actual photo to get all the colors to read right, to get that sense of um, light and shadow. There's nothing wrong with, um, with changing um, some aspect of your resource to, to get the effect that you want. <clears throat> okay, so I am starting to get the feeling of some of these shapes that, that are in here, the forms and the faces, and some of them are feeling kind of like they're starting to feel right. And this is where I have to say darker, 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 because that shape on the on her upper lip um, I can't paint it quite as light as I see it in the photo because it needs to support the, the areas around it that are um, hard for me to paint light enough. Okay, I just think, um, I know I'm an hour in, but I think if I finish off her hair and I want to really keep it painterly, then I can get pretty close to being finished. And then it's just um, slowly adjusting things um, to get them so that they just are um, starting to gel a little bit better. But it doesn't, nothing has to be perfect in this, but I want the at least the anatomy to feel close to being right. Okay, here I am mixing all this black into the red that I'm trying to keep pure because um, I'm getting lots of reds in the hair and, that, and that's transitioning from all that dark color. So right now, you can't see me, but I have my eyes almost completely closed and that's so that I can um, I can judge the values better and judge the colors better by, by squinting down, eliminating any texture or detail that I'm seeing and really um, hunting for the shapes and the values. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, I don't know if, uh, if any of you were alive when... Uh, when, uh, what is the artist's name? Uh, Leroy Neiman. When Le Leroy Neiman was famous, that's, you know, we're talking about um, early to mid 70s, I guess. He did a lot of um, sports theme paintings, but he would do a lot of paintings with, you know, very intense colors that were um, almost out of the tube. He would get all the value structures right so that they would work together, but, um, but he would really um, pump the value, pump the color rather, in rather um, solid, thick paint, opaque paint. And that is sort of what this is starting to look like. If I keep it painterly enough, then um, I can then sell this as a, as a um, Leroy Neiman painting and make a few million dollars. Um, Maybe I'll erase the YouTube video afterwards so there's no evidence. Um, okay. Um, so I don't know how this, I measured this, this um, landmark here, but it still seems to be in the wrong place. Okay. Um, and the eyes definitely aren't sitting right. You can see I have the eyes uh, much more at an angle than they actually are. So this um, this one eye has to drop down, and that's 
you know, the trouble with foreshortening is the temptation is to move things further apart than they really are. Um, because that's how our brain wants to think of them, even though that isn't how they look. Um, so I have to um, keep on sliding this puppy down and then adjusting where her, her iris is. And then she has that light coming in, carving her eye. So, um, yeah, so there's some places where the, the light is kind of dancing around her face, and I don't have to be exact about that either. I'm just kind of getting them in, in the right general vicinity will make it feel like it's a, um, you know, slightly blurry um, reflections on her skin. But I do need to get the this contour right here. So one thing will help here is that you can see her ears. They're very subtle in here, but um, they're well below her mouth, the line of her mouth. And that's really going to help you feel how much this head is turned up. That actually is has some green in it. Um, if you think about it, as the, her head turns upward, the ears, um, which are further back on her head, will will drop down like a, like a box kind of that's rotating. Uh, parts of it will be moving up, other parts will be moving further away, will be moving down. And that will help the this idea of the foreshortening. I'm not sure if I have enough clean black on here. I may have to pour some more out. Um, I don't, I'm kind of feeling like the, there's a lot of the drawing that isn't exact. I have maybe the, some, some widths of her face not quite right or something, but, but I, I kind of like the feel of it so far. So I don't know how much I'm going to work to, you know, match the likeness exactly. I'm more trying to get, um, make it work as a painting. There's some lovely um, deep reds in here that can go almost pure again. This uh, quinacridone red is very transparent. And so the more I paint with it um, in a pure way, the darker it will get. I don't think it will go like the purple. I don't think it will look black, but it will look like a very deep, deep red. Um, there is some other reds out there. There's um, a transparent, um, I think it's called earth red, um, that looks almost black in its um, in its pure mass tone state. When I say mass tone, if you just lay it on thickly, um, then it will look almost black. And I'm just actually throwing some blues, a uh, thick blue color in there. And uh, right along her hairline, I, I'm, I've got too much light in there. It's not reading properly. It almost has to go black. To and there and there's just very little of her forehead showing. That's really slipping away from us in space. So, if I'm showing too much forehead, then that then that definitely is not going to read correctly. Thank you guys uh, for picking this photo. I'm really thrilled because <laughs> you're giving me a workout here. <clears throat> okay. So yeah. So. Um, Romy Pie says, I can't draw at the same time as painting. I need the drawing part uh, ready to paint on it. But I guess as you get more confident, you feel more comfortable to paint without drawing previously. Um, there's actually a video where I talk about this a little bit, about um, my painting technique and why I really don't draw that much beforehand. 
but um, but part of it is that you do build confidence, and as you get better at um, making making it wrong and being able to correct it and um, being able to have more confidence over your ability with the paint to to move things around and to repaint and redraw things, um, the um, the easier it becomes. Then then nothing really becomes so precious that you can't just say. Okay, well that eye is in the wrong place, but I, I, uh, it's the best eye I ever painted, so I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, no, you just kind of sort of get to the place like, oh yeah, I can paint that eye again, no problem. Um, I'll just, I'll just do it, and um, so yeah, so you build that confidence, but you only build that confidence by taking sort of uh, that risk that over time you, you will get better and better at doing it. Okay, so I really want to get some pure red, this quinacridone red, along the edge of her face. And that's going to help um, boost that overall sense of intensity, where I can go just a little bit darker without sacrificing the overall lightness of that side of the face. Um, and uh, she's losing a little bit of her chin here. I'm going to bring it back. And also I want a little bit of a, a sharper edge right here. So you have a sense of that, the jaw that's out in front of her neckline. So by this being sharp, and then this being a little bit softer here, then we, we really are, um, we're playing with the, with this, that sense of space. The, the perception of space to give you something that will help you move your eye forward. This was a um, a great trick of, I hate to call it trick because the guy was um, unbelievable, N nothing was really a trick, was um, Vermeer about how his edge control of ways of moving your eye in and out of space as you looked around the canvas. He just had one soft edge against a harder edge all throughout um, his paintings and um, not really how your eye sees or how the camera sees but how he wanted you to um, understand the painting he was just um, forcing you to appreciate the all all the sense of levels of depth in in the painting So, and he was using a technique, uh, a, uh, some form of camera obscura, um, which um, allowed him to see what kind of more how the eye sees, even more than just um, doing a setup, is just really using something, a lens, to see things that are in focus and out of focus and what that what that like looked like without um, without ever seeing photography and seeing what camera effects look like. He had the, the ability to see um, some of those effects. Okay, so I am, okay, so I'm an hour and 15 minutes in um, last week I went for two hours. I may need um, all that time, but I definitely am not going to need two and a half hours. Um, I will probably end up ruining the ruining the painting if I paint for that long. And just um, darker, 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 darker is my, like I said, that's my chant. Um, because I really need this side of the face to, to feel like it's popping and and right now, with all the light that I have in this this other side, with the lighter yellow, is it's not it's not helping. So I have to find a way to make to go darker here, and still keep that little bit of sense of reflected light. So 
that's um, probably closer in value to where I need it. And I still can come in lighter in very small areas. And that will still help me describe the form. Remember I said I wanted that to keep that edge sharp there. And the top of this cheek, I need to be a little bit lighter because that's helping to describe the form. Okay, and there's a pre fairly pure blue that's coming in right on the upper edge of the eye here. And then the sweeping up. So, like I said, had said before, you really want to um, think in your mind how these um, things are moving in space as you're painting them, so that so then you you start to feel the um, the tops and the bottoms and the sides of things, so that you're you're almost painting like um, almost like you're painting on this on a face itself, where you're really starting to feel the forms, and that's where um, that's where you'll have mo the most success at um, creating that sense of dimension. If you really can get to a place where it, it, it does look like you're painting right on somebody's face. Um, so you can see I don't have the, the base of her nose. I don't have quite the right shape yet. Um, so I'm just making a little... Um, some minor adjustments there. And see if I can catch that light that's coming and then another dark shape that's just above the nostril. I don't have a thin enough, um, I probably have a tiny brush somewhere that I can pull out, but I don't want to if I can figure out how to get it um, without pulling out a little brush and the top of her nose. So she has a slight um, under lighting. The light is coming more, a little, it looks like a little bit from below. So the top of her nose is going to be, have this little bit of a dark, darker um, touch of shadow to it. So I wanna pull that around. Okay, so I'm starting to see the forms um, now a little bit better in the relationships and I can see um, bits and pieces of the drawing itself that are off still. <coughs> still, um, still going to slowly um, correct the pieces of the drawing that aren't quite working yet. Just ripping off more paper towels. Um, I go through about um, 400 paper towels in a painting. Um, and the, the gods of carbon footprint will um, strike me down with lightning because of the amount of paper towels. There probably is a more um, environmentally friendly way for me to paint, maybe with cloth that gets um, thrown in the laundry or something. but. For now, um, all the oil painters that I know um, use rolls of paper towels, so um, if that's what they do, and um, that's what seems to work, then well, who am I to say otherwise? Okay. So just modest adjustments here to get things to read properly, to move things, to get the forms to um, point up or down enough. And I really want to get the tip of this nose reading correctly and just the glint in the white of her eye in the um, also feeling like it's really reflecting light and I don't feel like it's quite there yet. So that's going to be 
where I'm going to put a lot of my energy now. Um, I um, Let me just get her shirt done and her shoulder done so that I feel like um, then all of my energy is going to make the, the finish of the painting work. Okay, so mixing enough color for her shirt with the phthalo blue that I have on my palette. I may have to reach down and get some more because some of this is a little dried out. That is looking like about the right color. There's these funky green um, reflected lights that are coming into her shirt and I don't know if I'm going to paint those yet or not. I'm not sure they add that much. I mean, they're kind of weird and they play off all that um, they play off all that pink in her face, so maybe it is worth um, trying to get some of some of them, or at least hint at them. But I think I feel like I can do the job without it. Um, but maybe it it will help the painting. So I'm just scrubbing in that pink now, hopefully to get it um, thin enough that um, that it's feeling um, has enough intensity of color. Someone had pointed out that um, to me that she has this tattoo on her shoulder. Um, that's going to be for a different painting to worry about a tattoo or maybe in a commission where I needed to really um, have those elements in there. Okay, she has pink light on the edge of that shirt. Boy, this is really challenging getting these some of these colors to be intense enough. to go both pink and purple here to go dark enough and I want to feel that shirt wrapping around her neck and so I have to clean up that area that messy purple that I have in there so you guys are quiet out there I hope, I hope I haven't gone offline again. Let me see. It says that there's eight people here um, watching. That's good. Um, yeah, like I said, um, feel free to, um, to paint along with me. If you don't do it this time, maybe the next time. Um, and uh, like I said previously, I will, whatever work that you do, um, while you're painting along with me, I will post it to my Instagram um, page. I have about uh, 15,000 followers. So that's how many people will get to see uh, your work um, if you're not shy about it. Um, and so I did that um, with the painting of Emma a few weeks ago. I She did a drawing at the same time, and I posted her drawing. And uh, she got all kinds of reactions for that. I was a little jealous. She got a better reaction than, than my painting did. So maybe I, maybe I won't offer that anymore then. <coughs> People are just going to get get better response than me. Okay, so I'm going to um, refine some of the edges of her hair so that it. Um, so even though her hair is big and round and kind of floppy, undefined shape. Um, there's enough information there to tell you to help support this idea that her head is tilting back, that there, you're seeing more hair um, 
back down underneath and just um, where her hair curves around is is important information and really softening up um, and that's because I'm running out of black <laughs> that, that maybe that's not the right reason but um, it, it will create a, a greater sense of depth if I really let the hair get much lighter along the edges there. Okay, and, um, but with that, I need to have a darker edge supporting it along her face. And that's where I need to get more black on my palette. Excuse me here while I get my uh, rickety old body bent over to pull the paints out. Okay, so now I have some pure black on my palette and that's make, gonna make me happy. So yes, I'm shooting to finish this painting in the next half hour. So this is where this is where all the excitement is. Um, again, because I may completely fail. So here, again, thinking about keeping this edge very sharp of that of the jaw while keeping and in the photo her neckline here is fairly sharp but um but i do i just already made that decision that i want to keep it um keep it a little bit um softer as a device and if i can um, keep that discipline then that is going to serve me well Okay, and then she has right where her um, neck meets, her jaw meets her neck, is this darker shape. It's really like a, a crease that's forming there. And drops back into shadow. That's going to help describe that shape underneath her jaw, if I get it right. here something like a core shadow I don't know if um, for you those of you familiar with the term core shadow it's essentially the shadow that's in between your main light source and your uh, reflected light so there's an area that really isn't getting very much light at all and that's um, that's known as the core shadow compared to um, uh, another type of shadow which is um, a cast shadow up from a form. So those are two different types of shadows. When you're looking at shadows and painting them, it's useful to think about what type of shadow they are because then you'll treat the edges of those shadows differently and that will help you also create a greater sense of space. Uh, core shadows will tend to have softer edges where the shadow goes from darkness into light Whereas a cast shadow can have a fairly sharp edge, especially when it's close to the form that's casting the shadow. Um, I didn't really go so far as to explain like what those different terms mean exactly, but um, that I can stop and do that a little bit if you if you feel like you want to know that information. But um, but just real quickly, a cast shadow is. Um, if you imagine a ball sitting on a table, the cast shadow is going to be the shadow that's on the table that's um, from the ball eclipsing the light um, from that tabletop. Whereas a form shadow or a core shadow is the shadow that's on the, the actual form itself. I am going to use a little bit of pure white here, even though that light is actually not as... Um, as pure white, um, but it'll allow me to get it light enough. Okay, I need to be very careful where the f um, the relationship of the eyes are to each other. Um, if I'm not going to have her um, 
be a completely deformed um, and get those um, those right in relationship to each other or and now I'm just repeating myself talking in circles um, to get it um, to get them so the anatomy looks right and that they're on the same level I have to just work back and forth make sure that I'm getting them in the right place. And um, one of the reasons why I cropped this photo the way I did is because I wanted to get her chain on her neck in the in the painting too. And um, now I haven't even um, indicated where it might be. And so, but I can paint that fairly quickly as long as I'm getting the colors in her neck um, somewhat right. So I am going to lighten up uh, some of that area now. There, so there's her collarbone. I have to make sure that I'm representing it right so it doesn't look like just a stripe, but it actually is um, creating that shadow that's on the upper edge of, of her collarbone and that she's getting light from some light source that's um, down below. And then there's sort of this dark bluish edge that's here, a little bit um, phthalo -y blue again. And some more of that blue that comes in over here. Okay. So I've done just a very uh, rudimentary job of getting the forms in the neck. I may keep it that way because um, it doesn't need to do too much again. Um, keeping some of these um, forms somewhat undefined and very soft in relationship to other parts. Um, okay, so that's not looking too bad. Knock some of these edges down. Um, some of the transitions in the painting where I'm going from one color to another, they're um, in the photograph they may those transitions might be very soft and in my painting um, I may they may not be so soft and I have to figure out how I want them to be and change them if they're not if if they're distracting I let's see if I can unselect this um, there I was getting sort of the Photoshop uh, handles showing up and distracting me. Um, sort of the center mark of the photo right in the middle of her face. And Okay, that's better. So here, her edge of her lip is catching the light, and I can come in with pure white very lightly because it's going to mix a little bit with the colors that are already down on the palette. I want her lip to hang a little bit. So this is where I'm going to come in. I'm going to put in some of the smaller shapes that I see to get the some of these forms to read. Because it's there's nice, loose, abstract um, paint strokes in there and they create a lot of interest. But if the overall um, if it doesn't feel real, if it doesn't have a little bit of sense of reality, then it's not going to not going to work as well. Um, so I do want parts of this that you actually feel like you can come up and uh, pinch the edges and feel the form. And that's really means that I'm coming very carefully and painting some of these values. Little um, dabs of light that are showing up that are very subtle and if I don't paint them subtly then they'll it'll just read as a bunch of um, paint that's thrown down okay um, but 
I can feel I'm getting close. I'm giving myself uh, 20 minutes to finish this up. The soft, I want to feel the softness of her cheek there. And I want to keep it fairly dark still. So that means like pushing it a little bit darker instead of lighter. She has a dark edge where the top of the cheek um, kind of gets into shadow right there. I painted it a little darker and blacker than it. Um, is in the photo. And I may want to come back just a little bit from that. And I want to get that spot of yellow that's just right up here. And I can exaggerate that a little bit. And also then there's a little bit of blue up here. Same thing, can exaggerate that a little bit. And need to fix the anatomy of the nose. I knew it was wrong very early in the painting, um, but I also knew that I could come back and fix it. Okay helps if I come with the right color and value for where I want to paint. Okay, a little bit darker here. Um, need to make the base of her nose just a little bit broader. Hope that light that's along the edge. And that light blue that's catching the inside of her nostril. Okay, lighter. And I need to go even lighter. Okay, that might be too light, but I can come in and carve into it. I can I can feel my voice dropping off a little bit. Um, okay, um, I have um, Aya who's written in still here. Um, too bad I don't have my oil paints with me, but I'd like to draw along next time for sure. Dorothy G, thanks for this. The information is very helpful. I missed most of the first hour, but we'll definitely go back and rewatch. Okay, well that's great. It, it will be posted on video, I mean posted on my YouTube channel and I will keep it up there um, for the rest of my life so you can always go back and watch it. Um, and I need to fix the little bit of nose here. I, I almost said I almost said nose hair. No, the nose that's right here that's um, that I not carved the nostril the right shape yet. Okay, getting very quiet right here. It's just uh, me concentrating. Oops. And apparently I didn't concentrate well enough because I just painted right into uh, where I didn't want to paint. Okay, and a little bit taller, this nostril, and then it cuts uh, right in here. Okay, and now I've, um, the tip of her nose, I've made too, too short. I need to um, stretch it out a little bit really feeling around for the shape of the, the base of her nose here. It's the, it's sort of the focal point, so I really want to get it right. There's a light edge that comes all the way down here. And then, um, 
and then a fairly sharp dark shape that cuts into it. Yep, that's getting closer. Um, if I can, I'm gonna have to repaint that blue. I can see that light blue. It took me two minutes to get, but now I know where it goes. some pure red that's the I'm putting a little napful red here instead of the cronacridone red just to get a little separation in those red colors if the color shifts a little bit not that big a deal okay and I have to make the tip a little bit lighter to get to read properly so I could literally spend hours, um, and I have on some paintings, just going back and forth with these small shapes just to get them just right. Um, but I don't want to do that here. I do really want to keep the freshness of the paint and the, and the, the immediacy um, feeling of the whole thing. And so that's, um, so I'm going to, in a way, step back a little bit, make sure that I'm not going too far. And because um, overall, the face is reading. I mean, it is reading foreshortened and um, has just about the right look to it. So, um, so why, why ruin it? You know, I mean, not ruin it, but why spend so much time trying to to make it look um, perfect when that really wasn't the real point of the painting. It was to, to, to be an expression of the paint. I just needed some elements to feel um, solid enough. And that's a little different than getting everything perfect, um, but getting that sense of form and feel, make it feel like the light is hitting it. So just going to carve in a little here again, try to feel that hollow of her cheek up there. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to see if I can give her a little more chin. I've, I've maybe shortened it a little bit. Purple. Need some purple right here. That's just light enough that I can read the color, but I think that's just a little bit too light. And then I have a dark right next to it. And that dark just drops straight down, keeping it very purple. Keep that pretty sharp here, the shadow that's underneath. Sometimes I, I look at other people's paintings and I can be quite critical. And I think one, um, one mistake a lot of painters make is they have everything too soft in the painting. And when I see a painting like that, it makes me crazy. It makes me just want to take a paintbrush and put down some really um, harder notes. Um, yeah, so occasionally I'll go into a gallery and I'll whip out my paints and I'll just start painting on other people's paintings. Doesn't bother me too much. Okay. Uh, so going a little bit lighter here. I am getting, I've got about 10 minutes to go here, guys. And sometimes like, like I did on the, um, previous painting, sometimes I'll continue to paint a little bit after I turn the, the camera off. And uh, I just need to do that sometimes because in the midst of painting and talking and not really backing up and looking, then um, I need to just do that a little bit to get 
um, to get things uh, so that they're working correctly. And right now, I just don't feel like I can just back up and take the time to do that. Um, I also, in those 10 minutes, I just do want to spend the time getting the focal points of this painting to read, which is the eyes, the tip of the nose, um, and those little bits of light that are, that are hitting. So if I can just um, refocus on those a little bit, I want to come in almost with pure white right here. That's like the lightest light in the painting. And there's another one here in the corner of the eye. And then there's, uh, I'm going to repaint the pupil a little bit here with some very um, pretty solid black so that it, so that it reads. And it's a pretty interesting shape, her eye right there. It looks pretty small. That's maybe because a little bit of the distortion of the camera. And it's really um, looking straight at us. And, but it doesn't look quite round. It's sort of the, this outer edge is dropping straight down. And then we have this uh, highlight that's just right my brush is getting a little bit too fuzzy, so maybe I can find a different brush. This is a, I pulled out a flat, which will be helpful because it has side of that squared edge and I can get white right on the corner, put it in. That's pretty good. Um, Ten minutes. Really want to get the strong purple that's on her upper lip. And then come in, make sure I get enough reds in the rest of her lip so that it feels like that's the surface color. And I want to push the, um, the upper edge of her lip um, higher. I don't, I have it too short So you can see part of what I do here is I'm just um, constantly evaluating the, the drawing, the shapes, the colors, um, and then making adjustments as I go. This is, this is key. You can't, you can't do really successful paintings unless you're constantly doing that evaluation of how all the elements are working. And then at the end, to do an evaluation of the, of the entire piece to see how it's all working together. I can see overall, I've made her eyes uh, lower or maybe her nose higher than the photo um, or something. Maybe I just didn't make them narrow enough for them to feel right. And so I can in a little bit, give her, make sure that her eyelashes are dark enough there. She has some blue color coming in into, maybe it's the shadow, the, the, the light, the blue hitting her upper eyelid that we're reading through the eyelashes. And get her eyelash on this side. You can feel in close. No. It's very, you know, feels like, uh, like I said, like a, um, like a Klimt painting or a, a Mucha painting, or maybe even Toulouse-Lautrec was famous for doing um, underlit faces at, um, that are foreshortened, sort of almost um, carnival-ish feeling. more 
purple in there, but lighter. And I don't really have a whole lot of ultramarine, but that's what it feels like it needs in that spot. And I need, a, I need my bigger brush. Yep, purpler. Okay, there's some rivers of light that are coming into her hair. That's a place I can be a little more expressive again. Doesn't have to be exact. Doesn't have to be the exact color. And come in with um, darker reds. Here, we see some of those in the photo, but it's where the hair is kind of catching that very strong light. And coming across, there may be some curls or something that um, catch that. Just doesn't hurt to get a lot of paint on the brush. And on the other side, likewise, there's some blues but where the hair is catching light, and that's really going to help compositionally getting some um, colors breaking up that larger dark form. And I'm going to put some down here, even though I don't really see that much color. And some reds down there, too. And she has some pretty interesting curls in the photo. I don't want to paint them quite as sharp as they are, but I do want to um, indicate them a little bit. Okay, so there's, right now, I'm not matching her anatomy exactly, but there's this interesting, there's kind of a nice uh, sweetness to her face that I like. And um, I know, um, that I'm not going to get that her likeness exactly, but I do think that um, overall aesthetically it has a nice look to it. Remember, I did this painting for a competition for a clean air comp competition in Easton, Maryland, and I um, hired this girl to sit in a cafe, uh, outdoor cafe, and I painted her. And um, what I remember is that. Um, she had kind of this not very pleasant expression on her face. And for some reason, I really, I kept that, that expression on her face in the painting. And thinking about it years later, it's like, that. well, that was really stupid <laughs> that I painted this painting and she has this really unpleasant look on her face. Like, who would want a painting of a girl sitting in a cafe looking disgusted? Um, so, of course, I still have the painting. <laughs> no one bought it. Um, oh, well. Um, live and learn. Sometimes it, um, it pays to um, paint in a way that you know people will like. Um, will like, if, especially if the idea is to sell the painting. And, and that was uh, one of the ideas of that, was to sell it. Um, so... Uh, we're down to four minutes. It's uh, looking pretty close here. I know that I'm going to work on a little bit after words, but I'm not going to change too much. And then I'm going to post it um, to my Instagram page for anyone who wants to see and to my sketchy, um, my sketchy page for those who know sketchy or are on sketchy. Um, so if anyone sees, wants to see what it looks like when it's all done, um, can do so. Um, I'm not getting the, um, and I'm really down to the wire here. I want to get the lower part of her teeth. I just want to get them a little bit lighter, like it's, um, like those are catching the light and that will, yeah, that's, that's what, and then just, uh, red um, that, those forms and I'm missing a whole area of red in her upper lip here okay 
uh, let me see, 8.58, we're down back to the last two minutes here. It's looking pretty good. I'm just going to throw in a couple uh, very loose strokes of blue in here to get pieces of that forehead where the light's coming through. And that um, will help support the rest of um, her head knowing a bit where that forehead is and where it ends and where it ends. So I have to come in with a little bit of black here, so just the top of the forehead and to give a little bit more information about the curls. Okay, one thing I can see with my one minute left is I need a little bit stronger red in her hair. And I can keep on going for as long as I want. I'll be a hostage, so I can go a minute or two over. But if I really pile in some thick root, I don't want to go get too Medusa like here, so I'm going to soften that up a little bit. Okay, but that feels a little imbalanced, so I need to come back in here with a little bit of, um, get this dark come down a little bit lower. And I am at nine o'clock. Um, okay, so uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and watching. I hope you can um, come back in following weeks. I This will be reposted. Um, soon after this is over and um so if you didn't get a chance to catch the beginning please come back and watch um the more you watch the more people get to see it because then youtube um that helps promote the video on youtube so i encourage you all to try to at least as sort of a background video put the whole thing on and watch it all the way through um and just want to put in a couple harder lines right here. I think it's going to help uh, a little bit. Thing left to do is to sign. Okay, let me see. Hello. Okay, I dropped out here towards the end, so I don't know if I really had a chance to say goodbye. Um, thank you all for coming in and watching, and please, um, if you missed the beginning, come back and um, watch uh, watch it again. Oh, um, well, while well, I have you here, I almost forgot I was going to paint in this necklace, and I never got to it, so... This is just a dark red that snakes around here. It's only will take a second. And, and once I get that darker red in,